This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Then cross out your eyes. So when Kanye raps about Louis V and Rolexes and classical art, exactly what exploited pockets of black America are those references being mined from? But <laughs> That's an excerpt from the movie Dear White People. And when you hear the title, you feel like it's a letter to all white people. But you have to see the movie to understand what it's about. We have very special guests with us. Tessa Thompson is here. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks. And, Hi. And, and Justin Simeon. Am I co- pronouncing that, that correct? Is, that's correct. That's Director of the movie. That's right. All yeah. right. Tessos and Four Color Girls. You did Grey's Anatomy as well, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Veronica Mars, right? Mm-hmm. You've done a lot of work. <laughs> You've used the internet. Huh? No, well, <laughs> well, well, I, see, I studied you, but I've seen your work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with your work. Cool. Um, who is she? I don't know who this you is. You don't know how? I don't know her. You don't know who she is? I don't know who she is. Okay. Been okay. Oh, well, look, Justin, uh-huh. Tessa, Tessa, Justin. Oh, hey, what's okay, up? There it is. Oh, oh you look so familiar. Yeah, you look really. Were you in Two uh, White People? Did you? I forget. All right, no, no, sorry. No, okay, right? You paid her. We're still um, <laughs> No, not really. Okay. Hey, was, Wait, it, it I'm was waiting a, on that. It was okay. an independent film. Okay. <laughs> We were tight on the finances. It's coming to you, Tessa. Just hold up. I'll wait. I'll You're wait. You're gonna get it, dear white people. That 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 uh, title in itself is a is a uh, almost alarming in a sense. It, all, <laughs> it definitely gets people attention. What made you decide to make this movie? Um, you know, for me, it was we were having a conversation. Me and my friends were having this conversation mm-hmm. and, and and talking about our black experience of sort of having to be in between different cultural spheres and sort mm-hmm. of playing up this aspect of our identity and playing down this aspect of our identity and just the pressure of kind of like you know bobbing and weaving around other people's presumptions of, of us. We were having th- that conversation and it was funny and it was interesting. It, it wasn't really anywhere else in the culture. And yeah. um, I also have a great love for you know the black art house, the stuff that you know do the right thing beget the Hollywood Mm -hmm. shuffles the Love Jones and and just so those movies that went into the complexity of the black experience Mm -hmm. uh, but also the complexities of the American experience Mm -hmm. you know through the lens of of black characters and it was just a a love for that kind of genre that had really gone out of style and gone out of vogue and uh, you know a desire to talk about something new that was my experience so this was based off of your actual experience on the college campus that's where it started you know I mean I started writing the script a while ago about eight years ago when I was a, a senior in college um, but then the, the script kind of began to be more about my experience just in general, just in America. The school was really, you know, meant to be a, a microcosm for the larger American experience where mm-hmm. your identity is everything. And how people see you can sometimes, you know, get you in a door, get you kicked out. And, yeah. uh, and some yeah. parts of the world get you shot. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I wanted to sort of get into that in a contemporary uh, context in a really arty, kind of fun, unconventional way. Okay, now Kelly and DB saw the movie, and Kelly couldn't stop talking about your character, Tessa, because I feel like she could relate to it. <laughs> go, 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 go ahead, Kelly. Well, congratulations. I really enjoyed Thanks the movie. So um, I wanted to say, as a, I'm a product from an HBCU um, mm. alumni, Jackson State University. Oh, right um, I loved because it, rem- it was reminiscent of school days, but I loved it because this is for the millennials. Mm. And Sam White, Tessa's character, you know, I, how did you prepare for that? Because I have my assumptions of who you you looked at but who who are people that you researched well on? i'm curious what your assumptions are first oh definitely like angela davis yeah. nikki giovanni uh-huh. very strong women but you had an inner struggle inside yeah i looked at those things i mean i my references were pretty varied i mean there's like some b arthur in there somewhere there b arthur <laughs> yeah Ma, i didn't, I didn't <laughs> see that but... wow I tried to edit that out. From but, Golden uh, Girls. Be off the <laughs> Listen. Um, <laughs> I just mean that I thought Sam came from a really unique place. Right. And I felt like, especially because she's somebody that's trying to reconcile all these parts of her identity, she wants everybody to think that she is Angela Davis. And truthfully, sometimes she's, you know, uh, Taylor Swift. I mean, she she's not Taylor Swift, but I mean, she she that resonates with her as well. And those are parts of her that she kind of wants to hide or keep secret. And so I feel like when I was developing her, I had I would ask Justin, like, how Angela is she in this moment? Mm. But there were other moments when she wasn't at all when she could really just be who she was. And um, yeah, 
that I liked play, playing someone that yeah. was so complex in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was also trying to master her identity. I feel like we're now in this space where the age of the selfie, where we're constantly being the archetypes, archetypes. Ar- wow, English. I don't speak it in the morning. <laughs> um, we're, we're constantly trying to design who we are. Um, and it was fascinating to play someone that's trying to do that and in some moments kind of not doing it so well. Yeah. And so one of the things to let people know, the title is Dear White People, but this isn't a black movie, just like Justin talked about. It talks about race and gender because you have someone Mm -hmm. who is a homosexual. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the movie is really attempting to sort of talk about identity from these four really different perspectives. And they're definitely four different black perspectives, but they they, they can't even agree with each other on what being black even means. You know, so in that way, sort of, you know, the movie's for everybody. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, just as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, it's kind of time for every man to be able to be the every man. You know, it is obviously it it has race (laughs) right in the title and and that's on the minds of the that's on the minds of the characters, but ultimately I, I see it as a story about, you know, the, just being a human being and trying to sort of like figure out who you are when, you know, you're not being reflected in the culture around you. Do you have the story of the white guy or the white girl who wants to be the black guy or the black girl? <laughs> there's, a, there's a character in the movie who we lovingly refer to as Black Mitch. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not black. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he is not black. Uh, he is from Vermont. Uh, but he, he knows a lot more about black culture than some of the black characters in the film do. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, which I've run into. Uh, I've had that conversation with a few people before. It's like, I, you know, I didn't study being black. I just had the benefit of just being it. So I didn't, you know, I didn't brush up on my, you know. But that's in the movie blackness. as well too, right? Yeah. That's in the okay. movie as well, yeah. I want to continue this conversation. How can people see it, Dear White People? It's in theaters this weekend, man. This weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right. Friday. If you, if you go to, you know, dearwhitepeoplemovie.com slash tickets, uh-huh. you can buy your tickets right now and they're selling out and um, I'm so excited to see what people do with this movie when they, <laughs> they get their hands on it because it's definitely meant to uh, inspire some conversations in the lobby. You know what there I mean? It is. It's, yeah. it's a movie you got to talk about before you go home. All right, 888-742-3345. Give us a call. Sway in the morning, Shay. Four or five, Dear White People is the name of the movie by Justin Simeon, who's here. One of the stars, Tessa Thompson, is here as well. Um, and um, I'm, I'm really curious about this movie. It's, it, you, you mentioned um, higher learning and, and movies like Love Jones and Do the Right Thing. And this is appears to be the, the new millennial version of those movies, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really, yeah, it's, you know, there was a time when like, uh, you know, black movies could be about all of the shades of the black experience and mm-hmm. and black people would go and see them and white people would go and see them and they would make a lot of money. Uh, and, and unfortunately, it's just been too long. You know, I'm, I'm not really trying to necessarily be that for the generation. There just hasn't been anything else. Yeah. And, you know, this was a movie that was just in my heart for a really long time. And Refuse to take no for an answer, and and every no we got, we just kind of kept moving, and somehow we're here. You're here, it's man. amazing. Uh, Justin and yeah. Tessa, just from the strength of the title, it made me start thinking about things in, in pop culture, where there's a lot of conversations about black appropriation mm-hmm. and people pointing a figure at Iggy, and before Iggy, people were pointing both fingers at Miley and feeling like they're borrowing black culture and exploiting it for profit. What do you guys make of that? With Iggy in particular. I mean, you know, it's it's a double edged sword because on one end, I mean, we're all, we're all in America, and yeah. and so when you as an artist contribute something to the culture, like it's up for grabs. You know mm. what I mean? Like, we, this is what we do. This is what everyone has always done. It. What's frustrating though is when um, something is sort of appropriated, for instance, by you know a white artist or something, and it's not done as well. But then it becomes a huge craze. You mm. can sort of feel <laughs> some type of way. You know, uh, I remember uh, Nicki Minaj. I think on Ellen was like. Like, you know, when a black person does a black thing, it's really just not that exciting. Right. And, it's, and that there's just something kind of irritating about that, you know, mm-hmm. um, but it is it is the truth. But I, I can't put it on, on the artist that appropriates because that's what we all do. We all sample. I sample as a filmmaker. You know, uh-huh. you see my movie, there's references to other movies, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's sort of always been the case in America. And yeah. we've been dealing with that since jazz, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not Elvis. something that's going away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, in iPhone. some ways, I guess it's the white iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, imitation of the is the highest form of flattery. Yeah. I think but my problem, I, just personally, it didn't strike me when I watch Miley twerk, for example, like that's a kind of celebration. Mm-hmm. What I found personally upsetting about that performance were the black women that felt like props that were on stage with her yeah, with these big teddy that's bears. 
that that to me, that kind of, com- as Sam would say, the commodification of culture in that way becomes problematic when it's not just a legit celebration, but it's like this is this is an item. This is something that I can objectify mm-hmm. and not respect. And right. that that's that that strikes a chord with me. And, that I think is really problematic. And the other piece of it is, you know, when people who aren't maybe don't have enough black friends in their life or are not you know familiar with the black experience just think that that's all there is to the black experience. The twerking. Yeah, like that's that's the frustrating thing is to be distilled down to like one to thing. To be boxed. Yeah. I remember going to work in Canada and sitting down in the makeup trailer and the like, bless Canadians, uh-huh. but she says to me, she's like, would you like me to put some music on? And I said, oh yes, please, I appreciate that. She goes, I don't have any rap though. Mm. Wow, because that's what so, all you are, Tessa. Right? And I said, well, that's great because I also like Joni Mitchell. I mean, you can put you on some Wu-Tang. You can't listen to that, you're but, right, Tessa. But, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Damn, you've named B. Arthur and Joni Mitchell in the same interview. Listen. <laughs> trying to be white she, she has a <laughs> <laughs> listen she's just like sam sam had uh-huh. an issue right didn't it does are there dating issues in this movie for sam your character there's some Spoiler dating alert. i have some booze but yeah. we can't we won't talk got, about that she now. got some bays you know some, you know, some bays yeah. <laughs> okay uh we got uh, people on the line jordan is in los are you in los angeles jordan jordan yeah, i'm in la good morning man say hello to tessa say hello to justin Good morning. Good morning, Justin. Good, Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Sway, the whole family. As a beast. Hey, let's stop. What up, man? So what you wanted to say, did you have a similar experience on, on a campus or in any other environment? Oh, man, so many. So, hmm. I, you know, I'm from South Central L.A., but I joined the U.S. Coast Guard out of high school. And for one, you know, it was not a lot of black people because black people can't really swim and make it in the service. I dealt with that whole stereotype. And then uh, my first unit that they sent me to, it was 250 white people. And I was the only black person on the boat. You know what I mean? And um, my introduction (laughs) and everything was just being isolated and being by myself, having to adapt to one, never being out of L.A., never being around that many white people before, and being like the sole person to represent my entire race around all these people. So it was just an awkward feeling because I feel like if I did anything, I represented all black people. Mm, mm. Man, that's interesting. So were you a little bit nervous being surrounded by water like that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk about that Amistad. <laughs> that trip you was on. Water, the, water, the water was fine. I, I literally learned how to swim in boot camp when they when I joined the service. Oh. Wow. But um, it, was, it was cool. It was a great experience on the boat, and it really taught me a lot because all of the stereotypes that people have, sometimes you have to embrace it. Like, it was a cat who literally got there with me. I was the first black person he had ever seen in real life. Wow. wow. Oh, damn. Wow. I've had that I've, I've, like, I've had that conversation before. That's rough. Wow. The first black person they saw in real life. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jordan, thanks for your call. You're a citizen. That's way in the morning. Marquia thanks, is on the line. Are uh, you in Albany, Marquia? Yes. Okay. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Say hello to Tessa and Justin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Um, but yes, I was calling because I also went to a predominantly white school, um, and it was actually a predominantly white engineering institution, mm. and it got, we had some tension on our campus at a point in time, um, <laughs> because we had the Black Students Association, and someone wrote an article in our school newspaper and said that they felt that we were racist because we had our own association, and why couldn't they have the White Students Association? Another student wrote an article and compared us to squirrels and said we were no smarter than the squirrels on campus. Wow. So, wow. and yeah. somebody published that? <laughs> they published that? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it was I, in our school paper. I always think it's crazy when like black student associations or black student unions come under fire at white schools. It's like <laughs> the entire school is a white student union, like, <laughs> with the exception of these ten people. Like right. let, let them have a room. Like let them have a meeting once a week. Like what's the big deal? Damn, I can't believe they published that. Wow. Uh, you, do you guys deal with that in this movie? Uh, to a degree, you know, there's a the, the movie starts. Um, there's a controversy because the black student house on campus, you know, it's the residence hall where, you know, if if you want to, you can live there, and it it, it has a, a culture of of being just the historic, you know, that's where the black people are at, or a lot of black people are at, and um, the school is wanting to um, integrate and sort of uh, you know randomize housing mm-hmm. assignments so that you can't sort of pick just you, you know your house, and 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 the students in the school feel like. Uh, you know, that disproportionately targets their their hall because they don't have people on the board to sort of work their magic and get them into the house that they want to get into. Mm-hmm. And this is a real thing that, you know, campuses face and deal with. Um, and, and that that particular episode, you know, I pulled that really from Harvard because they were kind of going through that in the, in the late 70s. Yeah. It's sort mm-hmm. of like they had this school that they had a house on campus and they were basically trying to break it up. And, you know, the people there didn't really have the power to, to live where they wanted to live and they, they felt disenfranchised. Wow. You know, uh, dear white people, 
people. It's a movie. It's out this weekend. I'm going to go watch it. Um, I know I could watch a free screener, um, but I'm actually <laughs> going to pay for the tickets. Please yeah. do, man. Yeah, yeah. I go. appreciate that. DB, did you pay, or how did you see the movie? <clears throat> screener. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kelly, how about you, Kelly? <laughs> screener, but I'm going to I'm gonna You're going to pay. Gonna pay. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Okay, well, congratulations, Thank man. You. Thank Sounds you Sounds like so an much. awesome movie. Tessa, great to meet you. So nice to meet you, too. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Justin, good to meet you as nice well, to meet man. You, man. I see big things, man. Thank you. You know, Heather acts, too, man. So Okay. You know, right. just, I'm Let's just saying, it. man. Everybody here. Is, we are all oh. actors. <laughs> and who is, whose voice was that? I want that Ow. person immediately. Yes. Like, right. your movie is coming out on Friday. That's right. Ow. Ow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're hired. Whoever okay, that dude. was. You like that? All right. I, w- cool. I want that person. All right. <laughs> Justin Simeon, Tessa Thank so Thompson, much. thank you for coming by. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45. 